Hello. Hello and welcome to our time. I have a thorn in my side. Not again. Right at the beginning of the program, do you know I went the other day to buy some toothpaste and when I, I the box was about this long because it matched all the other toothpaste boxes and when I got the toothpaste out the box it was only that long. That's ridiculous. Not only that. Was it in a wrong box or was it no, it was the right the box. box. No, it was the proper box, but they've made them smaller and charging the same. And at the same shopping centre while I was doing the grocery shopping, I bought some breakfast cereal and half of it was Packet? air. <laughs> half of it was air. You've said that before about things you've bought, washing powder or something. Washing just as Stop bad. It. What's gone wrong with the world? See. It's wasteful, apart from anything else, is all that extra packaging. Uh -huh. takes up all that extra size when it's packed into something. In the, in the shop, it's taking up far too much space for what you get in product. Well, we need to do something about it. Malcolm. If you see something like that, please leave us a message on Facebook because we'd love to hear from you and have a whinge because if it's a thorn in your side like it's a thorn in my side, I don't want to pay for air. I thought the air came with the planet. Can we move on? Oh, if you wish. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to have your company on this episode of Our Time. Are you still with us? I'm purged now. I'm fine. <laughs> I hope you're still with us. Have you heard of birds of a feather? You and me. <laughs> Stick together? Yes. No. This you... is something a little bit different. Birds yeah. of a feather collectibles club. Oh, are we meeting them today? We actually are The meeting... whole club? No, Corinne and Peter Draper are oh, coming okay. in to talk to us about their very unusual collectible things. I oh, can't wait for that. Yeah. Well, okay, have you heard of Muriel Matters? I have now. <laughs> because I just said it? Yes. <laughs> Do you know, I heard of Muriel Matters probably in about 2010 because we have with us right here, Francis Bedford, MP, Hello. Welcome is, that to the middle, is that your middle initial? That's my post nominals. Oh, but I have a few. <laughs> MPs, just a couple of them. Lovely. But Muriel, you discover. <laughs> no, you're not Muriel. Francis. Francis. I, can, I can be. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard you dress like her frequently. I do, I do. But how did you find out about Muriel Matters? It's a really interesting story, I think, and I hope your, your viewers will think too. This book arrived in my office in 2000, about 2007. Because you really are a member of Parliament. I really am. That's, my, that's my day job. And yeah. we get lots of great reading material and I just sort of tossed it to one side thinking I must read it and when I eventually got back to it on page 14 it's just one little paragraph talking about the first woman to speak in the House of Commons was actually a South Australian born woman called Muriel Matters. The House and of Commons in the UK. In the UK and I because I come from Sydney I just thought everybody knew about it and then 2008 when I got back to it just before the centenary I realised nobody knew anything about her so I thought I'd make a speech in the House, did a family tree found a few people who were related to her and and then with a whole dif different set of circumstances of serendipity found out that uh, Lady Mary Downer was related to Muriel's family by marriage so that's and Alexander Downer who was <laughs> that's right um, he's now a High Commissioner to London yes he is yeah. but he's <laughs> He's, he was in the Liberal Party, uh, but what was he? I can't well, remember. he was all sorts of things. Well, he he was. was deputy leader. But what did he end up leader. being? Well, he was foreign minister for yes, a long okay, time. And uh, so uh, through all of that, we, we found the story of this wonderful woman forgotten by history. Well, because she ended up in London, or stayed in London once she went there, did she? That's, she didn't come that's back true, and, and London people didn't take much notice of her because she was from the colonies, and here we didn't take much notice of her because what she did was in London. Yes. And so she's just fallen through the cracks completely. Well, let's just start a little bit more at the beginning because mm -hmm. what, what's interesting is this is about women having the vote, and it's, un it's just not conceivable today that women would not have a vote. Well, of course, Muriel had voted twice when she went to London in 1905 and just didn't understand what all the fuss was no, about. but even before that, because here in South Australia, we, we were the first state, I think, the on... The first place in the world to grant what we call dual suffrage, the right to vote and the right to stand for election. So when we talk about the right to vote, it's all different sorts of places, states, countries, all these sorts of different qualifications. So Wyoming was the first place in the world where women were 
allowed a vote of some kind. And then 1893, New Zealand granted women the vote, mostly through the work of the Women's Christian Temperance Union, who were of course very busy and big in South Australia. Right. And it's through Elizabeth Webb Nicol, a woman that very few of us have heard about, that she and her helpers gathered more than 9,000 of the, of the 11,000 signatures on our monster petition here in South Australia. It's, it's, it's an amazing a story. story. It's, it's in, in unbelievable. Society, isn't it? And so women in New Zealand said to us, don't just settle for the right to vote, ask for the right to stand. And of course, here in South Australia, the, the nasty men, and I'm sorry I have to say they were nasty men, who didn't want women to have anything to do with Parliament, oh, thought, no, thought no man in his right mind would vote to let women stand. So they added that in, thinking it would sink the bill, but of course it just got through. Uh, but it, we were one of the last places in the world where a woman was uh, able to be elected. That's 1959. In itself, I know, it? it's a horror. I know, you're looking horrified. Wow. <laughs> so we have ups and downs. The story has peaks and troughs all the way yes. through. It does. Well, I first heard about Muriel Matters in a show that you created, but let's have a look at what Muriel Matters or who Muriel Matters was. So we've got some photos here mm -hmm. that come from a book that's just recently been released. This is the book. That's right. It's the cover, Miss Muriel, Muriel Matters, Matters, as we yeah. all say together. Um, she was born in Bowdoin in 1877. That's a very early picture of Bowdoin from the State Library. And there wasn't a great deal happening, but her uh, grandmother began to buy little bits of land, which was the beginning of Matters and Company, which is an old Austra uh, South Australian real estate firm. But I love this photograph of a woman's mind. That's right. Now, many people thought women didn't have the capacity to make a decision. So they could wear hats. They loved hats. They, they loved chocolates. They loved men. They loved getting married. They loved dogs. <laughs> uh, Muriel, <laughs> used, Muriel used to say if she could decide on a man to marry for the rest of her life, she could certainly choose a member of parliament to represent her for five years. Yes, that makes perfect sense. So, so, this so is, is this her... Uh, this in is, the UK? This is the first of her hat trick of first. She was the first full-time paid organiser on the Women's Freedom League caravan tour. And she had to tour the South East Counties and Wales to, to create interest in women getting the vote because the people in London who controlled everything said that unless you can prove it's an issue of wide social interest, it's not going to happen. And so the women went to the country. Good so heavens. this is... This is how the House of Commons looked before the war. In World War II, there was a bomb dropped. And so up the top, you can see in the nosebleed section, the ladies' gallery. And there's a picture of Muriel attached to one of the ladies' gallery's grills, about the size of a fly-wire door. And we're very lucky to have one of those here at Parliament House in Adelaide that you can visit any is time. It yeah, another great story that we haven't got time to cover today. But those but are the sort of handcuffs that they, they use? Well, no, these were specially crafted. That's the, one of the brown belts that you could see the Women's Freedom League went out and bought two lunatic belts and attached their own chains bolted on with uh, handcuffs sort of on the end. Oh. They slipped them through the grill, bolted them together, key down the dress, working on the theory that no one was going to strip them so oh. they were fairly safe. And the reason women chained themselves was so they had time to speak. So once Muriel was chained, she had plenty of time to fill her lungs and after years of training as an elocutionist and actress here in Adelaide, yes, that's what she let was rip, for here, absolutely let yes. rip, that's right. So interesting enough in her history, um, she was quite well known for speaking poetry, uh, speaking, public speaking. Recitations, uh, yeah. Poetry. Yep. And she must have had some sort of theatrical experience here as well. She did. So we're assuming she probably performed at the oldest theatre that still stands in Australia, whilst Hobart claims the oldest constantly working theatre in Australia. Um, we've got the oldest purpose-built theatre here, the Old Queen's in yeah. Adelaide. Right. That we've lost the interior of it, but... Um, Still standing. Mm. Well, she worked for the Bruff Theatre Company and also the Rignall Theatre Company, so we're talking very early theatre groups here in, in Australia. We've got some more photos mm -hmm. of her in the UK. Um, that's right. Well, after she was in the grill, uh, she was arrested for obstruction out the front. So she went, spent 30 days in prison. And she said, well, if you thought that was going to break our spirit, you're wrong. It just makes prison reform one of the things we want to campaign for. So she but spent her life to, doing that. to um, move forward the women's That's movement, right. vote for women, she flew in the basket underneath this. That's correct. So she becomes the first aeronautical protester in the very early days of flight. But that's because they weren't allowed to distribute papers on the on street. On the ground, so they had to rain down from the sky. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Was it King George the Seventh? 
was was doing a opening a, of opening, parliament, parliament as as the monarch the does every like year. Mm. Correct. Yeah. Amazing. It's yeah. amazing when you think of that. And this is what the lady actually looked like. She was wonderful. So that's the poster that we used for the, or that she actually used for her 1910 tour here in Australia, and that's the poster we used for our 2010 centenary performance, which started in the town hall, then went through the fruit, uh, cabaret festival, and then went through the suburbs Out throughout the square. the square. Yeah, uh, because I saw the show and booked it. I know you're a wonder, and oh. it also did a country tour, so we were very lucky. And the girl that played that role mm -hmm. is now in LA America working in the movie. She sure is. And doing cabaret performances. She's amazing. Over there, yeah. yeah. She was so, kind of Teresa de Janeiro. Yes, oh. Teresa. Yeah. Uh, who's lovely, and I just saw a little thing about what she's doing now, which is very exciting. It for is, her. it is. But yeah. um, she was just wonderful as Muriel That's in, right. in the piece. But Francis, it's just inconceivable in a way this whole story hasn't really come out before this. Well, how lucky am I to have found it? And I've, yes. I've been really grateful to have it because I use it as an example to everyone why voting's important. Democracy happens every day, not just once every four years. And if we could get people as excited about voting as the suffragettes were, mm. wouldn't that be marvellous? Mm. And instead of electing the least worst option, we would be able to <laughs> agitate for a better product, wouldn't we? And you have spoken on your soapbox, <laughs> and we're pleased to hear it. Um, but the other, the other issue is that we have not really treasured our own history. It's very hard when it's hidden, so it's up to mm. us, wherever we can, to, to take it up and bring it forward, particularly in the in the schools through the curriculum that we have. Which is something that you've been doing? Yes. Taking, I'm, dressed I'm, up as mural? I'm very lucky to be Deputy Speaker of the House, which gives me all sorts of entree into all sorts of wonderful places, mm. police checked as I am. Yes. And I find that the children relate to me more if I'm in costume, so I have of two course. of two uh, period correct costumes of yeah. Muri that Muriel would have worn yeah. and the kids absolutely love it. I think they're listening and they seem to know three things at the end of every hour that I'm with them so they, the they must take part. in something about what we say. Francis, uh, we've talked about Muriel but we actually haven't talked about you oh. and we'd <laughs> love to do that. Could you come back and talk to us at another time? That would be marvellous. I would really appreciate and it. And would be. Thank you so it. much for Thank this you. because I think this really just scratches the surface. Find out more about Muriel Matt. The book is now available. It's just been released. That's right. Just in time for Mother's Day. How good is oh, that? Oh, well, there, there you go. go. <laughs> good Mother's Day present. Oh, perfect for you. <laughs> or grandmothers. Or grandmothers. Or yes. grandmothers. Yep. And we're going to be back with... The what? Yeah, what? No, what? The, the words of a feather. Birds of a feather collectible. <laughs> stay club. with us on our time. Us. <laughs> what? What do you so, have to... No, we're what? still what? concentrating what? on the I'm meal. sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> some information you really need. This slipper should be passed under the petticoat in front between the legs. If a flannel cap is made for the blade, fastened by strings under the handle, considerable comfort <laughs> will be afforded. Janice, do you want to try this? No! Dear, no! God, no! I thought it was like a... I don't know what I thought it was. <laughs> it's it's no the idea. slipper bed pad. Yeah. The slipper it bed says it there. It's the slipper bed pad. Which I've never, ever seen. I've seen other bed really? pans, but this is Dude. unbelievable. Like, honestly... I'm gathering it's for girls because boys don't wear petticoats. Is that right, Peter? <laughs> That's Karina correct. Peter That's Draper correct. here from Birds of a Feather Collectibles Club. Don't you love it? Honestly, yeah. that is so <laughs> out there. And you yeah, got it, it as a present. I did. Yeah, 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 my son bought Very it for me. What do you buy Many your years mother? Ago. A bed pan. <laughs> That's right. Did you have the petticoat to slip it on? No, <laughs> no, I didn't. I think that would be extraordinarily uncomfortable, yeah. but good luck. <laughs> but I'd, I'm not in that position. But I mean, no. that's as good as this one here. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> That's a douche. I'm sorry no, to say. But um you got that? A douche. Um yes. No, okay. Move you on. may not want to use <laughs> that Moving one. On? Okay. No. Look, um, the part of the reason of having you two lovely <laughs> I'll find all the good ones. Yeah. Part of having sure you will. on the program oh, is because you're part of this group, mm. which is called... The Birds of a Feather Collectors Club. And how did that start? It started back in um, 38 years ago, this month. 
actually, um, with a half a dozen people that just decided that they wanted to get together back then in their home, wasn't it? Mm. And, and what um, did you collect? Then, um, apart from her. Well, we weren't, <laughs> we weren't in that, that 38 years ago. Right, no, right. we only came far in. Too young um, <laughs> I, I've always had an interest in old things, but uh, I'm trying to... Is that how you met her? Stop! <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Oh, how rude to the guests, you how are rude. So terrible. She, she aged well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ooh, you've got one mainly one. military uh, items, and uh, but I, I, I tried to um, stick to World War I victory medals. Excuse me a tick, let me just hold these up because yeah. these are some mm. of the medals that you... Uh, Collectibles. Right. Mm. Collected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how old are these? Uh, well, the one on your left with the three, that's, that's uh, a World War I group, mm -hmm. and uh, they were awarded to a Renmark man um, who I actually had the privilege of meeting, yeah. and Corrine knew him Beautiful man, Ralph Jury. Uh, it's nice to know that things that have been so mm -hmm. valued mm -hmm. in life have similar value to somebody to collect, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, you've got such a weird collection of stuff here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't even know where to I'll start. I'll start here. Okay. What's this little bag? That's a lucite bag. Um, I collect lucite bags. They're from the 30s and 40s. And um, they were before Bakelite started. They were made of plastic and called lucite. Um, and then became Bakelite as it's well, around the, the same time. Yeah, it's just the um, coins. Um, I love the coins yeah. set in it. It's a beautiful little bag. That one came from America. I won't try and open so, it. Yeah, break it. it just Clips open, clips oh, open. Okay. And, um, so people actually use that. that. I use that on Christmas at Christmas time. Do you? Yeah, I did. I use all my bags. Do you? Yes, really? I do. Really? Yeah. But How here, amazing. this this mm. lovely little um, oops. It's this. a first aid kit. Yeah. It's a beauty. Isn't How it? old is this? Oh, it'd have to be, I'd say, from the forties. Would you? Yeah. Is it like yeah. First World War stuff? Um, not, probably oh no, Second sorry, World War. Second, Second World, World War, yeah. Pardon. Yes. There's that. There's mm. these little get here. I'm going to kneel down. Excuse yeah. me, chaps. Oops. These are quite amazing. These are Peter's. Um, these are yours? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one is... From Robinson's Jams. Robertson. Robertson, sorry. Yeah. Robertson, because I remember when I was a child growing up yeah. in England, we used to that old. Collect, collect them <laughs> and, and then you'd send mm. away for them and you'd get one of these little badges. That's right. Yeah. Aren't yeah. they fantastic? Yeah. All I got were cards out of the, the um, cornflake box. <laughs> yeah. um, and this one here. And that's an enema. <laughs> so, no, yes, that's exciting. And I there's even the that. lubricant there. Oh, look. <laughs> for you to use. I if remember as a child it. having that regularly. I was lucky, <laughs> such a lucky boy. Um, <laughs> now, these, these are... Rubs. And they're perfume bottles. Oh, my And they're goodness. very, very old. I love perfume bottles. I've got a huge collection. This one, actually, here, you can actually lock your perfumes up. See, it's got a little lock oh, there, and so you open the them up, and they were so precious back then. Yeah. Oh. That one, I bought that in America. That's so um, cute. But yeah, I, that, that's just unusual, very unusual. I've never seen one since, and no, I've not seen no. one before. Um, that's quite um, extraordinary, isn't it? I know. What about the coat hangers, though? What's well, so I, unusual about the coat hangers? I started on the coat hangers because Peter bought me one for my birthday from McLaren Vale, and, um, and it had the names on. Yes. And now I have over 500. <laughs> Where's he? 500 that, coat hangers? Yeah. Have you got a big wardrobe? I just, no, no, they're all on the roof of... Peter's put little hooks on the roof of the shed. Wow. We've got them all lined Hanging. up. They look beautiful. Um, now, now they're, Australia, they're from uh, South Australia. Actually. They're oh, brilliant. I'm just moving some of these things yeah, so we fine. can actually get these things to... These little doggies. Yes. They're very, very old. And, um, Aren't we all? They... They... Pardon? They're made of paper. 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 Are they really? Yeah, yeah, you can actually see this paper here. Oh, so they're very delicate and very sweet. This, this little guy, he actually jumps and he still does it. Okay. I've oh, done him at the collector for you. can wind him wind up and, him up he, and he does a lovely flip. Will He's he do fabulous. it there? He will. Well, he should. Yeah. Hopefully he will. Take them carefully away. Yeah, away you go, mate. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> and there you go. And away you go again. Uh, oh, 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 good boy. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to teach my dog that trick. Yeah. Oh, good luck. <laughs> yeah, it's cute, isn't it? Um, so, oh, he's done 
got another one. Stop. He's did you three. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, he didn't okay. even do that at the club when oh, I took okay. him there. He knows he's on so tele. <laughs> he does, <laughs> yes. But <laughs> oh, four. <laughs> Heavens. Show off. <laughs> Oh dear, so sorry about that. No, that this funny? little no, guy here, you will. Sorry, I interrupted. No, that's all right. Quite right. I'll just hold it so we can get that on camera. What is it? Uh, that's a, a peace badge, and it was issued after World War One, and every school child uh, was presented with one, and um, they were made by different um, jewellers in each state. Right. And. Uh, some of the schools had to apply for extra ones and uh, the government wanted to know how come because you only had so many thousand students but what was happening the kids who were first to get them would then get on the end of the line and get another one ah. and then they would sell them oh, okay. oh. so they made some pocket money out of so it. the thing about collecting what is it within human beings that makes I you want to collect i just don't know my father was a collector my auntie has a huge museum in her backyard in Renmark. She's in her 80s, her late 80s now, mid, mid to late, and she's been collecting all her life. She's got all her toys from when she was a, childhood, a child because she never moved from Renmark, so unlike me, whereas a lot of my stuff I lost from my younger years. But, but I just, it's just in my blood mm, from right. Renmark. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. born in Renmark. But you live now in Strathalbyn? Yeah, well, near Strathalbyn. We live at Gemmells. So how many people are part of this group? There's 30 members at the moment, paying paid members, and um, there was up oh, there was up to 70, 80 back. In when the day. you say paid members, what does that mean? How it, much does it, it cost to be part of the? Uh, Thirty dollars a year. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars a year. That's oh. right. Thirty for the two of us. It's not that much. <laughs> yeah. So. If you're interested in collecting, and, and mm. really this is one of the reasons we've got these two lovely yeah. folks here, because the club is getting smaller, isn't That's it? That's right, because a lot of them are getting elderly and don't want to come out at night. Peter, is, it, uh, a, is it a good thing for men to collect? I mean, we've all got, we've all sort of come from a background probably of having sheds, if you... Yeah, I, I guess a lot of it comes from uh, people of our era. Um, hang mm. on to it, because you never know, you might need it one yeah. day. We're not as so, yes, we're not at such a disposable age no, group, no, are we? No, no. no. Are you a chuck it out? I am a bit more ruthless than my husband, oh, I have to say. Good. He likes to hang on to things, but not collecting things like this. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Do you Which find is it, fascinating. Do you I just find, find it hard exciting. to move about the house because you've got uh, the No, because it's out it's it's been separate displayed. Area. Yes, in a separate yeah. area. So you so you've set things up so you has. can really enjoy That's what exactly got. right, yes. Because the danger of it took a long time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> the danger is that you collect, but you put it in a box and yeah, that's right. nobody exactly. knows. Mm -hmm. Look, we've got to go for a tick and we'll yep. come back in a moment. I'm sure yep. there's a lot more to talk about with these two fabulous people yeah. from the Birds, Birds of a Feather, Feather Collectors Club. Club. with Corinne and Peter Draper from the collect Birds of a Feather Collectibles Club. Club. And uh, other members we'd like to introduce, uh, uh, well, there's a huge group, look at them there. Mm -hmm. um, so how many have you got there? About We've 30? got about 28 to 30 30? that come regularly. Yeah. That's you? Yes, yes. And Peter, Peter, who are the others? Leone, Trevor, Jeannie, Tony, Renata, Rhonda, Elizabeth, Gavin, Pam, Colin, Ken, Morris, Patricia, Faye, Kay, Kay sorry, Car Carol, <laughs> Lynette, Hazel, Hazel Marilyn, Gordon, Heather, Myrtle, and Bruce. That's brilliant, isn't it? Sorry, but, it was but you're sort of losing people Dad. to age, mm -hmm. aren't you? Mm -hmm. And you're really looking for new members. That's right. So you've opened mm -hmm. a Facebook page and you're going to, yes, we're going to be open. able to then to leave information. That's so, right. So yeah. um, 
we'll leave some information on our Facebook mm, page. Yes. So if you're on Facebook, mm. uh, just have a look for Birds of a Feather and we'll leave some information for you. And hopefully you'll find a whole lot of other collectors. I know That's that you're an only a local group, but you may well connect with other collector, uh, collector groups yeah. around yes. Australia. Yeah. Yes, of yes. And then the, all the swapping can start. That's right. How <laughs> fantastic. This is fascinating. So thank you for bringing and all of these need. lovely things in. Mm. And good luck with Pleasure. the club too. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. joining. And good luck thank for the future you. in your collections. And I hope you have a big enough roof to put them under. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we hope you've enjoyed meeting these lovely yeah. people. Uh, today's been quite a quite a program, hasn't yeah, it? Well, it has. Quite different, really. Very different. <laughs> but we have been talking about past and the past with Muriel Matters True. and this collection. So until next time, when this will be the past and next time will be the future. Take care. Keep until yourselves then. nice till then. Bye. Bye for now.